Well, the crackdown on student protests is heating up in Canada. Police arrest over two dozen in Montreal. Around 500 protesters marched in the latest rally against the government's plans to raise university fees. But it wasn't long before they were stopped by police firing tear gas at the crowd. In February, the government said it was planning to raise fees by over 80 percent. It was this decision that enraged students to begin with, and uh, they were further agitated by a new law that restricts the right to protest. Over 165,000 students have refused to attend class, and hundreds more have been detained since then. Well, Press TV's correspondent Joshua Blakeney joins us now from Calgary to tell us more. Joshua, uh, what's the latest from these protests and the crackdowns that the students have been facing? And also, can you tell us about uh, the spread of these protests to other areas in Canada? Yes, yeah, sure. The, uh, this weekend was particularly politically potent as the Grand Prix, uh, the Formula One Grand Prix, decided to descend upon Montreal just as they descended upon the polity of Bahrain uh, in April uh, with scant regard for the human rights situation in Bahrain. And so at a time where the 99% personified by the brave students who are on the street resisting the austerity measures and the attack on their education, at the time when they're on the street, we see the 1% and the well-heeled in Quebec society attending this Formula One event. And so the students have not missed an opportunity to draw attention to the human rights situation in Quebec, where the police are employing illegal tactics to crack down upon students. They're, they have enshrined laws that actually abrogate the Canadian Constitution, which is supposed to be the supreme law of Canada, which, uh, which stipulates that the students and members of society have freedom of speech and freedom of assembly. That Constitution has been uh, enshrined in Canada since 1982, but the local uh, mafia-connected politicians in Quebec have desi decided to push that aside in order to justify uh, fighting fire with fire. The students were willing to negotiate, the students wanted to come to the table and had legitimate demands, and I, I think quite modest demands. There's many countries in the world that have uh, free education. The students were merely asking for more, uh, for, for, for less tuition fees. Um, and, and yet the, uh, the political class have decided to crack down, enshrine draconian laws, and to round up the leadership. And now even a member of the uh, Quebec Parliament, the National Assembly in Quebec, was rounded up and incarcerated. So now we've seen uh, opposition political uh, opponents being, um, political opponents of the incumbent regime being rounded up and incarcerated in what can only be described as a, a brutal crackdown by the local politicians in Quebec. Joshua you mentioned that the, uh, the students came to the t negotiating table. Those talks, uh, as I remember, broke down. Do you think that there are any hopes for future talks and maybe concessions from either side that would help end the uh, current impasse? No, the, uh, the Bill 78, which was the most uh, overt attempt to uh, quell the uh, demonstrations, was the straw that broke the camel's back. Rather than dissipating the protest, it enabled them to metastasize and increase. And even here in Western Canada, uh, the protests are mushrooming. And ev almost every night there's students coming out on the streets of Vancouver. And even here in Calgary, which is the uh, notorious for being quite right-wing, the home base of Prime Minister Stephen Harper. Even here, you have in the hundreds uh, protesters coming to the streets with their red squares on, acting in solidarity, because, of course, students in the rest of Canada pay double the tuition fees of students in Quebec, so they have even, uh, uh, even more reason to come to the streets in order to oppose austerity measures. We have to remember, of course, the Canadian government is engaged in wars all around the world. They're sending taxpayers' money the sectarian groups in Syria, millions of dollars, but then they're then turning around and telling Canadians, sorry, uh, education is now only for the 1%, and working class people cannot have access to affordable education. Likewise, with healthcare, the situation is similar. And so there's an ideological, uh, irreconcilable position between those who stand in solidarity with affordable education and those who are advocating for it in Quebec, and the 1% who are kind of represented by the kind of people who go to the Grand Prix in Montreal this weekend, the well-heeled, the uh, affluent plutocrats in Canadian society. Many thanks, Joshua from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. That was Press TV's Joshua Blakeney. Moving on, tensions mounting in the Ivory Coast. Thousands of people flee their homes and a wave of unrest 
uh, is gripping the West African nation. It all started after UN peacekeepers patrolling troubled villages near the Liberian border were targeted. Seven of them died. The ambush also killed eight civilians. While the situation